fourth step is prepare the analysis outline so it is better to have what we are going to analyze at the very beginning of study so what are the advantages of it first of all it help you to focus on objectives of the study and how you can do it you can make dummy tables that uh, how you are going to compare what are your um, analysis plan looks like <coughs> and uh, it helps you to avoid comparisons for which study has not been designed so unnecessary information or unnecessary result tables you will not prepare make sure that only data that can be analyzed is collected and you can collect proper information which you always need for your analysis plan so it will save you time uh, it will improve your quality of research so you will uh, uh, be ready uh, to publish it and it will get easily published and obviously uh, a good uh, analyzed uh, research is very easy to disseminate and it is very uh, important in policy making so yeah so these are the advantages of analysis plan so that's it the fifth step is you have to estimate the sample size so it analysis plan help us to determine the proper sample size uh, and it takes into consideration what you are measuring what is your study design and uh, what is the level of your study whether it is a descriptive or analytical so sample size is decided based on following prevalence yes confidence interval yes and acceptable precision please refer to chapter number 12 uh, for sample size calculation this question is also basically coming from the <coughs> which of the following technique is preferentially used when population is finite uh, again uh, go for uh, the chapter on sampling and sampling techniques uh, so here uh, when population is limited uh, then we always go for systematic sampling technique so why some study research they fail so first of all and very common thing is they have framed a very poorly stated research question and objectives or they have set unrealistic time scales either too short or too long uh, either the researcher uh, is incompetent or lacking experience or direction or motivation or training and sometimes uh, they've just started it but uh, the research is not being properly monitored or supervised and failure to respond to contingent situations whenever uh, there is a problem uh, during research you have you fail to respond to that and obviously uh, th that that is very common and when that happens you have to do course correction uh, you have to uh, you have to correct your mistakes <laughs> or you have to find an alternative route and if you fail to do so obviously it will lead to research or study failures so which of the following is the reason all are actually poorly stated question or realistic timeline and inadequate supervision so it is again the same question which has been asked poorly redefined research question weak timeline and lack of supervision are common reasons for study failures <coughs> so how to do this uh, project management or study management so let us uh, see the some essential points first of all you have to manage these five things manpower that is human resource your time your money or finance or budget quality of data or research and finally you have to also manage the data which is being collected it is always a teamwork you have to communicate with each other and you have to regularly monitor progress and targets right and who is responsible for majority of this function basically principal investigator is responsible for this resource allocation and time management uh, so this time management is essentially is responsibility of leader or principal investigator for scheduling various activity and for that he can use a gantt chart i hope all of you are very well versed with gantt chart uh, it is uh, 
uh, a chart which represents your tasks along with a specific duration or timeline uh, and milestones of a research project i hope all of you have made it otherwise you can google it again chart and uh, you will see what i mean <coughs> it is very easy to make financial management or budgeting obviously that is also important and quality management at all level is critical data management you have to collect data in a timely manner you have to manage it properly and you have to uh, if you find some fault in data collection you have to make a change then you have to do it right it is always a teamwork and coordination you have to communicate and you have to monitor and progress the target so basically it is a summary of what i have uh, shown in this chart so what are the essential points or important uh, parameters in project management so uh, th these are the points right so which factor is not essential for planning and management of study time yeah management yes it is important finance is important sample size reduction is never a good idea so yeah it is not essential uh, teamwork yes it is essential primarily who is responsible for allocation and time management a uh, principal investigator which of the following can be used to represent duration timeline sequence so can chart uh, which of the following can improve efficiency of research study time management scheduling activities budgeting all of the above they are essential component of project management a pg wants to do a community based thesis which of the following is a part of planning program management of a study um, you have to calculate sample size yes uh, you have to arrange transport to the community because it is a community based thesis yes that is also needed you have to also write it so yes writing this is also a part and all of the above so that's all for chapter 14